Hello everyone, in today's video where we're going to be continuing with our advanced navigation as we're going to try to make a dead reckoned fix. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a known landmark and then project our current speed as well as our current heading from that over an elapsed period of time and try to determine where we are. So what I'm going to be using today is uh, one of the uh, most famous landmarks of uh, Connecticut here. This is the Bark Hampstead Reservoir. It's a very, very famous dam here with a picture that if you ever get one of those Connecticut calendars, you're going to know that picture that's sitting right here. There's actually a really neat beach down here as well. We also know that if I go pop over to my little uh, chart here, we can see very clearly where this dam is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the position of this dam as well as my known ground speed as a way to go ahead and estimate my position. Now, people who've seen my Dead Reckoning tutorial are familiar with this technique. But this is also a really, really good way to have a sort of running bearing as far as determining where you are, or actually running position, I should say, over time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and now create myself a user point. This is going to be my fixed one. I'm actually going to make a note of what time I cross that because I'm going to need to know my time as well as my speed. Let's go pop back over the simulator real quick. I'm going to go ahead and reset everything here. Go ahead and unpause myself. All right. Oops, I seem like I've got myself time accelerated a little bit there. I'm going to make sure that's looking okay. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and flip on my automatic pilot. And we're going to go ahead and cross this position in just a moment. Uh, the moment we cross this, this is going to act as my last known point in space. I'm going to go ahead and pop over the top of this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and pause and bam. So this is going to be my initial position. So what we're going to have to be at this point is completely leveled off. Our power is going to have to be set exactly as we intend to. Everything's got to be going. Uh, we need to keep very, very good track of our direction. In this case, I'm actually going to swing us over to the west here so that we can uh, reliably determine. I'm flip on my altitude hold mode. I'm also going to flip on my heading roll mode. And we're going to start heading over here to the west. So what we're going to need to make this possible is we're going to have to go ahead and be able to keep very accurate time during this time and be able to know what our ground speed is. Uh, we're going to calculate each one of those in course uh, once we go ahead and get going. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause here as well as hit my timer. Now this is very, very important. The longer you take between dead wreck and fixes, the more the wind or the different properties of the air are going to start affecting you. So for what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a good solid three minute fix here. So we're going to get everything started up. Actually, you know what? Let's make it a five minute fix. We know we're heading perfectly to the west. Again, this is magnetic west. This isn't true west. This is going to get us in trouble in a minute, as you're going to see. We know that our current airspeed is, uh, if we take a real, real close look here, you can see that we're doing about 100 and let's say... Eh, just shy of 115 knots. I'm actually going to correct my speed here. Might as well calibrate our true airspeed while we're at it. So let's see our current altitude tear temperature. Let's go flip that on real quick. It's a 48. We need 9 degrees Celsius. 9 degrees Celsius is going to be this line right here. Moving that straight down to our current pressure altitude of 3,000 feet. Perfect. That's going to give us a true airspeed of 122 knots. Keep in mind, if we were calibrating for wind as well, we'd have to actually take the time to go ahead and calculate this for ground speed based on how fast or slow the wind is. Uh, that's for a different video, though, so don't panic on that one too much yet. So we're just going to proceed. We're going to do the best we can to keep this on the tightest heading we possibly can. And we're just going to keep going here. Notice I have no display of ground speed here. This is going to be completely estimated based on what we know. So we know our airspeed, our true airspeed, which again is how fast you're traveling through the air, is about 122 knots. Yeah, we're getting bounced around a little bit, but it's, you know, it's a bit of a windy day here. All right, I'm going to fast forward to the point of our fix. All right, we've got about 30 seconds to go before we're going to go ahead and take our fix. Again, we've been keeping everything as steady as possible. We're not touching that throttle. We're not touching the mixture handle. We're just going to proceed. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pause when we get to five minutes and uh, start our calculations. Keep in mind, in the real world, you can't pause like this. So you have to do all that work on your own. So I've got four minutes and 50 seconds and uh, five and eight seconds to go. We'll go ahead and pause. Again, we're just working off of our true airspeed and our known wind. Two, one, pause. All right, let's go pop back over the flight simulator real quickly here and make sure my airplane is not turned on. Okay, so what do we know? We know from this position, we have traveled five total minutes at an airspeed of 125 knots, not taking into account wind. So with that knowledge, we can actually project from this point where we expect to be. So let's go ahead and work out what that's going to be. So the quickest way to calculate this, of course, is if you have a calculator, you simply take the time in minutes, which will be five, divided by 60, which represents 60 minutes in an hour. And that means we've been traveling for a total of 0 0.083 hours. 
Now, if we multiply this by our ground speed, which remember, we don't actually know because we don't know what the wind is, we can then go ahead and estimate our position. So let's say 125 means we have covered 10.416 or 10.42 nautical miles. So I'll do that one again in case you missed it. So I go ahead and take how long I've been flying, divide it by 60, then I multiply it by a ground speed. If you don't know your ground speed, because uh, we don't know what the wind is, you're going to have to work with your true airspeed, not your indicated airspeed. In which case, that was 125, giving us 10.42 nautical miles. That's everything we need to know. So now let's go to our known fix, which happens to be right here. I'm going to right click, measure distance. We're going to measure on our magnetic heading. Remember, if you use true, stick with true. And we know we want a 10.42 nautical miles, which puts us right here. So this would be my estimated position right next to the Reuben Hart Reservoir. And this is actually neat. It's in this really, really tight valley. I'm going to go ahead and right click real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and create a user point. I'm going to call this fix2 at 000500. Bingo. So now we know exactly what our estimated position should be. So uh, let's go ahead and see. Let's go pop over the simulator real quick. Go ahead and hit escape real quick. I'll pause us and we'll see just how close we are to the estimated position. Now, I'm just looking around real quick and um, I'm not seeing that reservoir. I'm seeing a couple other things down here. Remember, this is a pure dead wreck and fix. This is not a fix we took by using ground references. So the wind is impacting our performance here. So let's go ahead and pop back out here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the airplane. And you can see that our estimated position was that close versus what we actually expected. If you look here, you'll notice our ground speed was actually 116 knots, meaning that because the wind was actually stronger than we expected in our face, we arrived late to our position. So the reality here is if you actually look at the reservoir, the reservoir is right here. Our estimated position was right here. So we're actually very, very, very close to being where we're supposed to be based on what our timer and what our dead reckon position is. And again, this little distance here, let's go ahead and measure just how far off I was here. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'll go ahead and get rid of that one. See how far off my position I am. We're about one nautical mile off, which actually checks out if you think about how many, we were almost 10 knots off. 10 knots in an hour, of course, as you could probably work the math out, works out to be about that distance. So it does not surprise me in the slightest that you can see. But notice that our heading was fairly accurate despite my little inaccuracies in my turn and everything else that you saw here. So what we could do now is we could go ahead and take our second fix off of this dead reckon position, or we could take a fix using a more reliable component. Now, the nice thing for us here is since we just crossed the Reuben Hart Reservoir, if I looked out my window and actually recognized that as being that particular reservoir, I could then update my new position, which would now allow me to determine what my actual wind is. And now that's an interesting calculation, but that's a calculation we're going to take a look at next time. Enjoy.